So the time is four o'clock. I'd like to call the meeting of the City Planning Commission to order. With a to go. I'd like to call this meeting of the City Planning Commission to order. Would the planner please call the roll call? Mayor Vandersteen? Here. Older person Bourne? Here. Ryan Sazma? Here. Jerry Jones? Here. Marilyn Montemeyer? Here. Dave Hoffman? Here. Don Spiton? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Next is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me in reciting this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is to introduce the uh, committee members and, and commission members. Uh, Dave, you want to start? Mike Vandersteen, Mayor and Chair. Chad Pelishek, Planning Director. Steve Soklowski from the Planning Department. Uh, Ryan Sazma, Department of Public Works. <laughs> uh, online, Marilyn. Marilyn Monty, Mayor, Citizen Representative. Thank you, Jim. Alderman Jim Bourne of the 10th mm -hmm. District. I'm the Alderman on the Plan Commission. Jerry. Jerry Jones, Vice Chair and Citizen Member. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you for those introductions. Uh, does anyone have any conflict of interest with the items on our agenda today? Seeing none, we'll go on to the minutes. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve the Planning Commission minutes from January 12th of 2021. Make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair, aye. Chair votes aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Then we'll move on to items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is an application for a conditional use permit with exceptions by the Sheboygan Area School District to construct a new storage building and a new salt shed at the Horace Mann Middle School located at 2820 Union Avenue. Steve, you want to start out? Thanks, Mayor. Um, we have Joel Vollmer from the school district here, Matt Wolfert, who's uh, with Bray Architects working with the school district, and I believe Mark Miller from Bray Architects is also on the line. Um, what we're taking a look at today is the Sheboygan Area School District is proposing to construct a new warehouse building and salt shed at Horace Mann located at 2820 Union Avenue. Uh, the new warehouse is approximately 9,000 square feet and the salt shed is about approximately 750 square feet. The new warehouse building is mainly designed for equipment storage with a lot of the equipment that is both used by the school district elsewhere as well as a, lot, a number of the equipment that's used for the new soccer fields and at Horace Mann. The salt shed is obviously a part of this project and is used at a number of the different sites that the district has. Um, Horace Mann was selected for this particular, uh, these structures because the land's already owned. It's uh, near existing soccer fields where much of the equipment is used, it will be stored. Um, it's also close to the recreation department's maintenance garage on the facility and the new facilities will allow the district to properly store assets and equipment where their existing storage facilities are not ventilated or heated which uh, are not conducive environments for the equipment that they use. Presently, the district has a storage facility located at 1230 South 24th Street. Um, if you wouldn't mind, that's all the way at the very bottom. And that's just a, uh, it's just a older warehouse facility that you can see from the picture. 
and it's also located in a residential neighborhood. You can see there's two houses next door across the street. It's, it's all residential in this neighborhood. And with the completion of the new <coughs> warehouse structures, the district will be able to eliminate and potentially demolish this and maybe at some point in time in the future, whether it's through the school district or others, maybe sell the land possibly. I might be speaking out of turn and the school district can confirm this, but maybe there's the opportunity to uh, demolish that and then finish it off with uh, residences, which would be more appropriate for the neighborhood. In addition, they lease a, uh, about approximately about a 7,600 square foot building from Boots and Brothers Construction, so they'll be able to get out of that lease as well. So um, the the um, buildings are kind of located at the northwest side of the site. Uh, the access it would be from Georgia Avenue. You can see uh, that it's located west of uh, the parking and north of their tennis courts. It's approximate. The buildings are. Um, approximately 21 feet for the warehouse and 16 feet for the salt shed, uh, or I'm sorry, and uh, 19 feet for the salt shed. And um, they're approximately 16 feet below the grade of Georgia Avenue. So there are a couple of variances being asked for. Typically for accessory buildings, we allow for 15 feet structures. They're asking for uh, the warehouse to be 21 feet and for the salt shed to be 19 feet. And they are asking a variance for the, from some of the landscape requirements. So staff is recommending approval of the project and I can answer any questions and the applicants are here. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Uh, would the school district like to offer any additional information? Thing, Steve, was about the. You have to speak into the mic. I'm sorry. Can you remind me on the uh, landscaping one? It's just for some shrubbery and stuff. And yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, That's there's there a little bit of landscaping that would be associated with this. And so right. we, uh, you know, as part of, I think you guys were looking to kind of hide it and stuff, but there is a little bit with the construction yes. landscaping that would be required. Right. So you just uh, submit that plan. Right. As far as the uh, building heights go, that was just because a couple of the vehicles that we have, uh, the height of the vehicles, backing them in and so forth with the door openings required a little bit higher structure. Very good. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Go ahead, Ryan. Monty Mayor. Go ahead. We have Ryan first and then Marilyn. Uh, staff has got a question. Thank you. Staff has got a question what should we do to blow up twelve thirty South Twenty Fourth Street? We have a storage building there or something like that. That is the. Can you, can't hear Ryan. Oh. Could you repeat that, Ryan? <laughs> what's a, yeah, staff was wondering what, what's going to be, to what's going to happen to your building at 1230 South 24th Street. Apparently, you have a storage building there. Oh, I'm sorry. 24th Street. 24th Street. Isn't that the. the that's the one, uh, the. the what's uh, Yeah. No, that's the other. Uh, 1230. Is that. What was the address, Ryan? 1230 South 24th, yep. that's the one in the residential neighborhood. Oh, that's the, the one that you had just shown. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, the goal, like uh, like Steve said, the goal there is either to uh, sell that lot outright, take and then, or um, take down that building and build a um, residence there of some sort through the either using the school, you know, we have our school mm -hmm. building projects. Right. So, All right, very good. Thank you. Marilyn? Um, I just thought it was a good idea to have the consolidation in an accessible area, and you planned it well. So I'd like to make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Thank you for Second. that motion. Okay. Under discussion, Jim, did you have a comment? I had a question. Uh, yes, I did have a question, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, this is either for Steve or our city engineer. Uh, are there any concerns with the salt shed with any uh, concerns with the DNR as far as salt runoff or anything like that? I remember a few years ago we had some issues with our city salt shed, city salt shed down at DPW. Uh, is there any way that the residue from that salt has to be contained as time goes along? Go ahead, Ryan. I'm not aware of any permitting, or did the school district check into that at all? If there's any kind of permitting for that at all? 
Uh, good afternoon, Matt Wolford, Bray Architects. Uh, the Civil Engineer Rettler uh, Corporation will be doing a stormwater analysis for the project as well. Uh, we're not disturbing sufficient area to do a, a major stormwater improve, improvement plan, but because we have stormwater features on site already that control quality and quantity, uh, we're gonna be taking advantage of those features with this stormwater runoff as well. So uh, no concerns regarding salt. Appreciate the question, um, but and we will validate with the Civil Engineer that any concerns are addressed. Uh, appreciate that thought. Thank you, is there any other discussion? Now, who had the second? Jim. Jim. Okay, Jim, very good. See no other discussion, would you please call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alder Person Bourne? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. Don Svitan? All eyes. Motion passes. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Item 3.2 is an application for conditional use exceptions by Stefano Vigaletti to construct a new cooler addition at the previously approved Slow Foods uh, grocery store at 731 Pennsylvania Avenue. Steve. Thanks, Mayor. Um, is there anyone on the line for this? John Annis or Stefano Vigaletti? Uh, yes, John Annis is here. Beth knows also here. Hi, guys. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, so I am. All right. Um, what we're taking a look at is, um, as the plan commission's aware, uh, Stefano had been in September of uh, 19 for the proposed Slow Foods grocery store, and they had received approval. Uh, subsequent to that, um, the, they had hired uh, the new architect and they started to do some uh, space planning for the interior layout of the grocery store and butcher and bakery. And as they started to lay that plan out, it was decided that it probably made the most sense to try and construct a cooler out, outside in order to maintain uh, a lot of the interior space for the rest of the grocery and bakery and deli and things of that nature. So that's why we're here today. We're taking a look at the cooler. The proposed cooler is approximately 800 square feet and will be located on the east side of the gro uh, grocery store adjacent to the parking lot. Um, the cooler is being used to store all the items they need cooled or frozen for uh, food prep area, deli, butcher lines. Um, the cooler it uh, will be cladded in cedar siding with a flat rubber roof. Um, the cedar will be directly attached to the visible faces of the cooler. If you could go up one. The there organizer has not yet started go to meeting. This call will be disconnected. Please dial in. <laughs> All right, she didn't care for this Sorry one. Stefano, that. we're still moving along though. And uh, so anyways. <laughs> yes. And so uh, one, one of the things that um, <clears throat> staff had worked with the architect and the applicant on is just the look of the cooler itself. Um, they've done a really nice job in terms of the grocery store structure. And so when discussing the cooler, one of the things that the architect and the applicant are proposing is to have that cooler clad in the same cedar that is presently on the grocery store. And in addition to that, they're gonna have some uh, trellises attached to that so that they could actually have some additional landscaping that could be growing on that um, uh, cooler on those trellises as well. So they've taken a look, uh, it's, a, it's a visible area. They've done a great job with the grocery store building and now the cooler, um, they've taken that into account and are uh, adding some aspects to it so that that also will be uh, attractive as well. Um, other than that, let's see, uh, the gro the, like we said, the grocery is well-designed, so it's important to have that co uh, cooler well-designed, and we believe that they're doing that. The biggest thing with the condition is you see the plans before you, and that uh, uh, right now this is not going to architectural review, it's just going to plan commission because it's a small project, but they would have to uh, um, install or construct the um, uh, cooler as depicted by the architect in the, in the uh, plan you see before you. 
Um, they also talk a little bit about a landscape uh, island. Could you go up to that first one? Or this one right here? And you can see just on, in this shaded area, and just on the um, east side of the cooler between the parking lot and the new cooler, there will be some landscaping mm -hmm. in there. So we just might want to touch base with the um, applicant to better understand what they're planning on putting there and what they might uh, put on the cooler um, just to get an understanding of what that might look, you know, what types of plant, what it might look like, say, for example, in winter time and how it's maintained throughout the year. So other than that, staff is recommending approval of the project subject to the conditions you have, and I can answer any questions and the applicants are on the phone. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. Uh, so would one of you like to explain the uh, landscaping strip there? John, you want to do it? Or you want me to do it? It probably, you've got more experience with this. What do you think? I can go ahead and explain. Um, we have uh, a little bit of space that we can add uh, in front of that cooler for landscaping. Uh, that allows us to have uh, a parking requirement that we need and the lane width between the two parking spaces. So it's not a very large depth for the landscaping. Uh, we do have the trellises on the cooler. Uh, therefore, we're looking to plant some sort of uh, vine climbing perennial in that landscaping bed that climbs onto the trellises of the cooler and provides some greenery on the side of the cooler. Stefano, I just want to say you've done a great job in the work that you've presented to us. We're really looking mm -hmm. forward to your project coming to a completion. Is there anything else you'd like to add about this project? No, I just think our coolers might look better than the building looked before, so I'm kind of excited about it. It was a bit <laughs> ugly back there, so and it, it's going to be, I think it'll look really sharp. Um, we're hoping to get ready by summer here. I think it's going to be a great thing for downtown Sheboygan, and we're happy to bring it. Very good, thank you very much uh, for that information. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Uh, Montemayor. <clears throat> Please go ahead. Oh, well, Stefano always runs a classy operation. I feel sure whatever he does will not be an eyesore. So I'd like to make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. Is there a second? second Boren. Thank you very much. Second Boren. Uh, that motion's on the floor. Is there any further discussion? I have a question, Mayor. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I read over, when I was reading over the proposal, everything looks great, but I did have one question, and that is, uh, for, if I read the uh, proposal correctly, the, the cooler is going to go on top of the existing pavement, uh, either blacktop or cement. Is there any concern there, uh, architecturally or engineering wise that where you're going to put the cooler is sufficient to bear the weight of the cooler uh is it sufficient thickness or will that have to be will that is that is that a, any consideration at all or has that been looked at i spent thirty thousand dollars on a new slab <laughs> that answers the question thank you yeah, one of, one of the things that we had done was worked with uh, Stefano a while ago in terms of uh, making sure that a footing was put in there uh, that would be uh, able to uh, support the cooler. And so while they were doing some other work last fall, they came in and did that work at that time in preparation of this moment where it got approved and then they could move forward. So that has been addressed. Thank and you. it's good we did it because the ground can move and those coolers might have been shifting. And so it was actually Todd Minkin at Fine Brothers that, that caught it. And I'm glad he did because we would have had an issue, I think, down the road had we not done that. It was a, it was a pretty substantial job they did. Excellent. Very good. The, re the only reason I asked the question is that in their proposal, it didn't. It just said it was going to be built on existing. And I didn't know existing yeah. was new. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Very good. Any other discussion? I'm here. Steve. All right, Stefano, the big question everyone's asking and that you're prepared for, we got to hear it, slow foods. Slow foods, like the, like why I'm calling it that? Yeah, yep. Sure, so, um, so the logo is a little yellow snail on a skateboard, which is kind of fun. Um, I'll start with that. Slow Foods is an organization that was begun in the 80s in Rome 
um, in reaction to a McDonald's opening, and the person was so aghast that this had happened that they began an entire, what became a worldwide association. They have a big thing every year in Turin. Um, so there's slow food, there's slow meat, there's a slow fish organization. They get involved in education. It is all based really on sort of just what it kind of says, the opposite of fat. It's all about sourcing sustainably, sourcing close to home, um, sourcing from producers who uh, are good stewards of the earth. It's, you know, if you, if, you, if, you, if you search, for example, on the slow meat site, it might tell you, it will tell you how many pounds of meat each American eats a year relative to the rest of the world and kind of goes down the path of sort of what we're looking at doing. I'll give you an example. We brought in a a Murray Gray steer last week. We're bringing in a, a, a Black Angus next. We were buying whole steers from these global farmers whose dream is to have a farm and raise a herd of Murray Gray, which is the most efficient breed at turning grass into fat. And so we're able to meet with this young couple and watch them now buy a herd and expand and have their dream of a, of a life of farming in Wisconsin only about an hour from us. So they will be purchasing a herd now to supply us. So that's kind of the the, one of the best examples I could give of slow food. So it's about uh, sourcing close to home, not the opposite of fast food, essentially. And the whole idea of the snail on a skateboard is kind of to say the experience will be quick, it'll be efficient, it'll be modern, it'll be exciting. But behind it, um, the mission behind it is all about buying local things from Springdale Farm and from local farmers and supporting people within our economy who are close to us here um we, we like to say eat a burger clean a stream so when when we when we source we're sourcing um using that slow food mentality thank you very much for that explanation and, and story chapters in, in the state of wisconsin that exist so there are chapters all over the country and all over the world very good Seeing no other discussion, all the, please call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen? Aye. Alderperson Boren? Aye. Ryan Sazma? Aye. Jerry Jones? Jerry Jones? Marilyn Montemite? Aye. Dave Hoffman? Aye. Don Svitan? Aye. Six ayes. Motion passes. Good luck with everything, Stefano. It sounds like it's, it would be fantastic. And we appreciate it. We're happy to bring it to Sheboygan. Can't wait. We can't either. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll move on to item 3.3, .3, which is an application for a conditional use permit with exceptions by vision architecture to remodel the existing uh, vacant car wash portion of the building into an additional dining and kitchen space at the Harbor Petro Station located at 905 Indiana Avenue. Steve. Thanks, Mayor. Um, the property is owned by Barsuva Adakari, and I believe Adam James and maybe a Jeff Peterson are uh, Adams from Vision Architects and Jeff is from CR Structures. I don't know if you guys are online. I am here, yeah. Yes, I'm here. All right. Um, so what we're taking a look at is uh, 905 Indiana Avenue, and this is referred to as the Harbor uh, Petro. Uh, the existing business is uh, operating as a convenience store and service station, and the existing building or orientation design and overall characteristics will remain. The renovation will occur within the existing building walls. There's no additions that are planned as part of the project. The goal of the project is convert the abandoned car wash bay, which is on kind of the, you can see on the plan, on the uh, southwest side of the building, is to convert that into a uh, small restaurant, approximately 1,300 square feet. Would have two restrooms, an order counter, and some limited seating for approximately about 12 customers. And it's anticipated that most of the restaurant orders would be uh, grab and go. The kitchen would be run by the same ownership as the gas station. Um, the a project will install new front windows to the north and south sides of the former car wash portion of the building and repaint the exterior facade. The intents to modernize the facility and provide more visual interest through horizontal and vertical elements, the red mansard, 
roof would maintain, would you mind going to the building elevations? Um, a combination of gray tones are incorporated to provide a base and a mill for the building, and a dark gray color is used to introduce vertical element to a otherwise horizontal building. A new dumpster enclosure will be provided on the west side of the building, and the enclosure will be constructed of concrete masonry and will be painted to match the building, and locating that dumpster enclosure location on the west side of the building will make it less visible. Uh, the applicant believes that the proposed renovations will significantly improve the aesthetics of the building along Indiana <laughs> Avenue and South 9th Street, and the building will look better with fresh paint and good, well thought out paint scheme. The additional landscape and agreed space will improve the visual aesthetics of the site and will soften the development. Um, a couple of, if you wouldn't mind going to the site plan. So, uh, Planning and engineering staff, maybe one down. Yeah, that one. Um, the planning and engineering staffs have discussed uh, the option of possibly improving the city of Sheboygan South 9th Street public <coughs> right of way along uh, the east side of the site, which is presently asphalt. Um, in order to improve the aesthetics of the site, the city is proposing to improve the right of way area between the access drive, between the two access drives to standard city, city specifications, which means basically removing the asphalt that's in there and installing curb gutter and the grass boulevard. Um, with that, we believe that that improve, there's not much green space on the site and that would improve that street frontage. Um, the applicant is presently showing, you can see on the east side, they're showing a couple of uh, 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 trees or bushes and some uh, landscaped area. They were thinking about doing a, a 1.5 inch river rock and some plantings. Um, that present asphalt on the side is very tired and unappealing and they've oftentimes kept uh, dumpsters and soda machines and vehicles there in the past. And since the city is looking to improve that right away portion of South 9th Street, it's staff position that the east side of the property between the building and property <laughs> should be improved with grass instead of the river rock. Uh, still some uh, additional plantings, but to also really uh, improve the aesthetics both in the right of way as long and on that side to get some grass and some landscaping in that area. A um, couple other comments the plan commission may want to have the applicant address um, the the time frame as to when you know they would plan to do the landscaping. Obviously, uh, the improvements and the dump that would go for the landscaping and the dumpster because the improvements are all interior. So we'd like to have uh, an idea as to when those might occur and. Uh, as conditions of approval, those definitely will have dates certain that those need to be completed by. I didn't know if there was any thoughts uh, about <coughs> signage. If so, they could always come in at a later date with that. There are a number of temporary signs on the building and on the poles and on the pylon sign. And one of the conditions will be that these uh, temporary signs be eliminated from the site. Um, uh, there is a air unit on the east side of the building, and I'm not sure if it's functioning or not, um, doesn't have a cover on it. So if that's not functioning, we'd want to see that that's removed. Um, there's a payphone next to the pylon sign. I don't know if that's functioning. If it is, fine. But if it's not, we'd like to see that removed. And then there's a, a blank white space on the pylon sign where the type of fuel should be listed next to a gas price like mid-grade or a premium or what have you. So we'd like to see that that uh, is taken care of as well. Uh, plan Commission should be aware that Building Inspection Planning and Police Department have all had interactions with this property uh, in the past concerning previous auto repair use, dumpsters along 9th Street, debris, equipment. So the Plan Commission should just be aware that uh, we've spent some time there and the applicant needs to be prepared to, uh, you know, he's, he's proposing a very nice project but uh, uh, the city you know, would like to see the overall look and feel of Indiana Avenue corridor improve. The new paint scheme, the storefront designs, dumpster enclosure and landscaping will certainly help the aesthetics of this property. Uh, the Harbor Metro remodel project has the potential to positively impact the look and feel of this neighborhood. So uh, staff is recommending approval of the project. Uh, many of the things we discussed are conditions of approval and staff is recommending approval. And if you, anyone has any questions, I can answer them and the applicants are online. Thank you very much for that report, Steve. 
Uh, gentlemen, would you like to add anything to that or answer any of the questions that Steve posed? No, I, uh, I think Steve covered it quite well. Uh, you talked about the time frame. Could you respond to that and what your expected completion date is? Yes, I can speak to that. Uh, so obviously exterior painting, landscaping, exterior concrete work uh, would not be able to be completed uh, until frost and the weather conditions allow for it. Um, so as soon as weather conditions allow for it, we would paint the exterior and improve the exterior facades. Um, obviously landscaping, urban gutter, uh, and any concrete that we were gonna do uh, would immediately follow the exterior facade upgrade. Um, so the time frame would be mid-April uh, to start that work. Any idea of the expected completion date if things go well? Uh, well, the interior restaurant should be about a six to eight week duration. Obviously, there'll be a, a lag or a gap between the completion of the interior and um, the exterior work, uh, but the overall project should be completed by the middle of May. Thank you. And then, uh, did you want to come in for later for the sign, uh, or do you have all the signs you need? The sign submittal will be a separate submittal. Very good. Thank you for that information. Commissioners, any other discussion or motions? Monty Mayor. Go ahead. Um, it's just a better appearance definitely equals more customers. The nicer it looks, the more customers will be knocking on your door. So I'd like to make a recommendation for approval subject to staff recommendations. Thank you for that motion and support. One last call for any additional uh, con discussion. Seeing none, would you please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteed. Aye. Older person Bourne. Aye. Ryan Sazma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer. Aye. Dave Hoffman. Aye. Don Svitan. Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Thank you very much for your, your time today, gentlemen. Good luck with your project. Thank you very much. We're looking at our next uh, meeting date would be nope. one in more the back. Item. In the back. One more. There's another one on there. Oop. Here, this one might be easy. Oh, okay. Item 3.4 is an application for a conditional use permit with exceptions by Vision Architecture to construct a new convenience store and service station at the southeast corner of North 26th Street and Superior Avenue. Steve, got a report on this? Yes, thanks, right. Mayor. Uh, so this is Mr. Uh, Barsuva Arahari again, and the same gentlemen, uh, Adam James and Jeff Peterson, are again representing uh, Mr. Arahari on this new project. So what we're taking a look is uh, a vacant, undeveloped property at the um, southeast corner of North 26th Street and Superior Avenue. Um, the applicant's looking at proposing construction of a 3,000 square foot convenience store with an attached dumpster enclosure and separate fueling canopy for gas. <clears throat> Buildings oriented to face Superior Avenue and includes a corner tower element facing the intersection of Superior Avenue and North 26th. Um, the building designs intended to be simple, welcoming, and high quality. The white facade was chosen to create a clean exterior and the charcoal trim adds contrast and definition to the building edges. A corner entrance faces the street intersection to welcome visitors while a center entrance creates a convenient entry for a quick walk into the convenience store. And the stone base anchors the building and provides uh, a nice warmth and texture. Um, there will be a small restaurant space on the west side of the building and the restaurant will have approximately eight to 12 seats and will serve menu of pizza, sandwiches, fish fried, deep, uh, deep fried app appetizers. Proposed store is projected to have approximately eight to 10 employees. Uh, applicants indicates there would be no outdoor storage. So again, we're looking at a 3,000 square foot uh, uh, convenience store, about a 1,300 square foot gas fueling canopy. Um, at this point in time, the, the canopy is not a part of this proposal. It is strictly 
gives you an idea as to what to, it will look like, and the canopy will have to come in at a later date for review and approval. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for that is there would be, a, my understanding is a separate contractor will be uh, uh, participating in uh, submitting the canopy. Um, applicant indicates that there would be air and vacuums on the site, but does not indicate where those are to take place. Uh, just want to make sure there are some residences in the area and want to just be mindful of where we're submitting those so they'll work with staff with that. The site design does include approximately seven parking stalls. Um, they do show in concept a monument sign, but that's concept only, so they would need to come to staff at a later date with regards to their signage. A dumpster enclosure is to be located on the east side of the building. Um, so like I said, the canopy will come in at a later date. There are two access, uh, ingress, egress points to the site. One is on Superior on the east side of the site, and one is about the midpoint of the property along um, North uh, 26th Street. Let's see, the property is made up of two parcels at this point in time. So before any type of building permit is, uh, issuance, the parcels would need to be combined. Um, plan commission may want to have the applicant address a couple things is uh, it, it, it's staff's understanding that this may be an Amico. I don't know if they can verify the fuel brand. Um, any sort of time frame that we might expect the canopy drawings. Uh, again, discussion on the vacuums as to where those may be located. Any idea if they have any idea where the tanks, underground tanks might be on the site. And um, just with regards to the site itself, there are some residences on the north side of the site. If you take a look at the fuel fueling canopy, you can see that the vehicles are headed north-south. And so um, when the applicants work with staff on their landscape plan, we certainly will be recommending and encouraging them to take into consideration where those vehicles face to the north and try to add some landscaping so the lights aren't shining into the residences across the street. There are a couple of uh, variances. One is to have a 6.3 foot uh, rear property line setback in order to make everything fit the way it is. It's fairly tight and there's still a decent amount of setback along that commercial building to the south. So uh, staff was okay with that. They would be looking at some locational landscape variances and they are requesting to develop on the half acre lot. Um, Plan Commission should be aware that staff has uh, had some issues with Mr. Adhikari's properties in other areas of the city and a recent site inspection revealed um, at 905, which is the site we we're talking about, there's a couple dumpsters, you know, hopefully these issues will be addressed based on the last uh, um, application, but there's temporary cigarette signs on the pylon sign, the pay phone, the different uh, uh, HVAC things uh, and mechanical equipment that don't look like are functioning that we wanna see removed. At the shelf station at 1710, which is one we recently looked at, the dumpsters are located outside of the enclosure. He has temporary cigarette signs located on posts and bollards throughout his site, and uh, he has not completed the landscaping that was required uh, to be done there. And the plan commission had approved some of the electronic message center signs at the site so that there wouldn't be the need for temporary signage. Uh, at 810 North 14th Street Tidy Store, um, he has temporary cigarette uh, signs located on his posts and bollards, a couple of soda machines, and again, we had approved some reader board, uh, electronic reader boards so that they didn't need the temporary sign aspects. Um, this development will certainly change the appearance of the property and based on the building and site design has the ability to positively impact the look and feel of Superior Avenue in this mixed use neighborhood. Therefore, it's imperative that Mr. Adekari, uh, Adekari properly maintain the new facility and property and not have the site scattered with temporary signs, soda machines, unenclosed storage. In addition, staff will be requiring a condition of approval that these issues listed above at the other stations be adequately addressed prior to issuing the building permit. So it is a real opportunity here. It is a nice site design and building design and staff is recommending approval of the proposal subject to the conditions you have before you. Thank you very much for that report. Gentlemen, did you have any comments or presentation you'd like to make on this one? I don't, but again, uh, Jeff and Chad can probably comment on the timing. Timing as far as uh, beginning of construction, or I guess I missed that. 
beginning and end of construction. Yeah, so obviously it's based on approval today and then uh, full, full civil, full architectural, full structural. So um, the plan would be to start construction uh, June, early summer, and it's about a, a seven to eight month duration. And, and then, uh, Steve, you had a couple other questions? Yeah, just 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 the other things that you can um, pass on to Dave is just that, you know, those uh, concerns have been raised and, and, you know, staff certainly wants to work with him to get these things done. And as soon as he can clean up some of those items and, and address some of those uh, and, and get the drainage plans and landscaping plans in, we'll be willing to work with him on getting those permits issued for this project. Because like I said, it, it you know based on the drawings and things like that, it is a nice site design and building. Uh, I was just wondering if it might be possible to uh, put the uh, fueling area in and have angled parking so that the lights are not going straight across the road. Uh, it looks like the traffic flow would move fairly easily there, but I don't know if that would take more real estate that's not available. We can certainly look at it. The right, right now the driveway that comes out onto Superior Avenue is actually in the intersection. Um, so as the cars leave the station onto Superior, their headlights would be shining down the, the road across the way. So I'm thinking of them when they're fueling. Uh, this way they wouldn't be shooting straight across the street. They'd be uh, shooting on an angle across that intersection, so it would be less obtrusive. Makes sense. Appreciate you taking a look at that as an option. Sure can. Commissioners, any discussion? Then I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. Well, I have that number. We think so. we have a motion in support. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, then please call the roll. Mayor Vandersteen. I vote aye. Alderperson Bourne. Aye. Brian Sazma. Aye. Jerry Jones. Aye. Marilyn Montemeyer. Aye. Dave Hoffman. Aye. Don Sfiton. Aye. All eyes. Motion passes. Thank you very much for your presentations tonight. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Jerry Jones. Yeah, and Mayor, before I make a motion, um, Chad, I just wanted to make sure you were keeping my vote on the grocery store uh, item. Aye. We do now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion in support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, everybody.